morning, good evening. My name is Audrey. Um, I hope you can hear me. I did try to test all of my um, all of my audio and my video feed. So yeah, please uh, just write in the comments, say hi. Just make sure that everything is working. Um, yeah, just welcome to 100 Days of Watercolor Mindfulness. This is as much of an important project for me as I hope it is for you. Um, mindfulness is something that I've been really practicing the last couple of years, especially during the pandemic. And um, yeah, it was really, um, it's, it's really changed how I approach painting. I think before I used painting as um, a way to express myself creatively, which you know is very important, but um, over the time it became something that would pressure me into creating for other people. And so I kind of lost sight of just creating for you know for art's sake, for joy's sake, for my sake. And so that's why I really want to um, yeah work on this project. So thank you for joining me. Um, hi, Rena. Hi, Darlene. Thank you. I'm glad you can hear me. My chat box is just over here. So that's why you might be seeing me going over this way. But yeah, so I want to start these um, mindfulness live streams with a with a breathing exercise. So if you are able to join me, um, what I do, I try to sit up, I get in a proper posture. So I kind of sit up in my chair, kind of roll my shoulders back and then let it slouch just naturally. And then you can place your hands facing up either on your lap or on the table, just wherever it's comfortable. And then, um, and then I try to place my feet flat on the floor. And we're just gonna breathe in through our noses for four seconds and breathe out through our mouths for six seconds. And yeah, we're just gonna do that for about a minute or so. So again, if you're able to join me, feel free to. And then you can close your eyes or you know open your eyes during this time. So we'll do this for about a minute or so. Okay, so here we go. guys back so yeah that breathing exercise even though it was very short I really like to practice it before I start painting I think um, when I'm about to paint there are often times where I kind of stop myself and um, I get really nervous and I start blanking out on what I was planning on painting and yeah or or, or I lose confidence for some reason you know and so a very simple breathing exercise just helps me remind myself like, why am I doing this? You know, what do I want to paint? And again, reminding myself that I'm painting for myself first and not necessarily other people. So yeah, and while we're painting, we're also going to practice this breathing technique too. So let's get into it. Um, yeah, again, thank you so much for joining me. So I have this new journal. So if you watch some of my unboxing 
videos, um, I got like three of these. So I'm gonna be using these for this 100 day project. I haven't opened it as you can see because I don't know if you guys can relate, but I get really nervous <laughs> about opening new art supplies. So I figured I would put my fears out there and have you experience this with me. So let's go ahead and unwrap this together. So I have my pair of scissors, here we go. I know the fear of the blank page is real. So if that's you, yeah, let me know in the comments if you feel the same way. I guess unwrapping it isn't as intimidating, but you know. Okay, here we go. That is off. Let's take this other part off. Okay, brand spanking new journal. So I really like this size. This size is five and a half by five and a half. Um, and I'm just, you are able to paint on both sides. So let's get into it. So welcome again. So here I am over up here in this corner. Um, yeah. So when it comes to painting with mindfulness, it's really about, um, you know, just checking in with yourself and your emotions. So, you know, it is the evening time for me. And um, yeah, it's been a long day. It's a Monday, right? I don't know how you guys feel about Mondays, but um, it was a long day. I also saw a friend who just recently had um, surgery for breast cancer, and so I mean, she's doing well. So it was it was a really good visit. But you know, I was making a meal for her, so it was kind of a busy day. Uh, I was kind of running around. Today is also the first day of spring, so there are just a lot of you know thoughts and feelings going on today. So I want to encourage you to do the same kind of just take a moment and pause and think about just what happened today. Were there any moments that kind of stuck out to you? And I think maybe that's what I want to capture on this first page. Again, fear of the blank page is real, right? <laughs> but I think after what I've experienced today, I want to paint bubbles. And that may seem really weird. I've never painted bubbles before. I'm going to do it in like um, a very loose way. So we'll see how it goes. But um, got my paper towel. Let's see. I think I'm just going to use my size six round brush and my size three. I don't want to use too big of a round brush, right? This one is a size 10. It's really huge. So I don't want to overwhelm this little page. So I'm just going to do a size six, size three. I've got my Lucas watercolor paints up here. I didn't clean my palette, but you know what? That's okay. <laughs> and different people have different opinions about whether um, you know you should keep your palette clean or not. So yeah, let me know. Are you team clean palette or dirty palette? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so I just use a spray bottle to wet my paints. And since it is spring and bubbles are kind of like, you know, bright, fun colors, I think I'm going to stick with like yellows, greens, blues, maybe a couple pinks, something like that. So again, this is, um, if you are just joining me or not sure about what these sessions are like, um, these mindfulness sessions are not necessarily tutorials. So if I am doing something that is confusing to you or unfamiliar to you, please you know, write a comment and I'll try to answer it as I'm painting. This isn't meant to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's meant to be painting from a place of mindfulness, okay? So you can paint along with me, you can paint your own thing, or you can, um, yeah, just sit back, relax, and enjoy too, okay? So I'm just wetting my paints, but I'll do my best. But with that said, I'll do my best to kind of narrate what I'm doing. I'm choosing some of my brighter greens. Let's choose this bright blue. I never use these really bright colors just because they're not, you know, I paint mostly nature and they're not very, you know, natural 
color looking. So I don't usually paint with these. So today is a good opportunity to use them up. <laughs> Rena, your team messy palette. Yeah, that's totally okay. I'm kind of in between. Like I'll I'll let this paint sit here for as long as possible and I try to use them up and then at the point where, you know, I can't tell what the colors are anymore, then I kind of switch them out. Let's get some yellow in there. I mean, you can see that I'm going to put so put the orange right in here. It's going to muddy up with that brown, but I don't care. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do in, in order to bring some of that breathing exercise and mindfulness into this session today, um, anytime I wash out my brush, whenever like I'm done with a color or maybe I'm done with a shape or done with the page or a session or anything like that, um, anytime I, when I, as I wash out my brush, I'm going to inhale and then as I blot, I'm going to exhale. And again, I don't do this every time I wash out my brush, but just at, at, at like a good stopping point. So if you see me kind of pausing and breathing, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Darlene, I see your comment. I've, have, have I ever seen Charles Evans paint palette? I have not. Um, I could definitely not paint with his, but I do leave mine until muddy. Yeah, so I feel like you and I are kind of on the same page. <laughs> like if it does get to the point where I can't distinguish the colors, then yeah, that's not a good sign, at least for me. Um, some people can still work with it, but anyway. All right, so I'm going to use this size, let's see, let's use a size three to apply the color. And then I'm going to use a size six to kind of draw out that color and then make the bubble. And then I start with the green. All right, so here we go. So I just like took a quick breath <laughs> before I even put the paint down because again, fear of the blank page. Like I don't know how this painting is gonna turn out, but this is where you really have to just let go of that perfectionism, let go of um, expectations and just put that brush on the paper. So take a deep breath if you need to before you put paint uh, paintbrush to paper, but let's let's conquer this fear together, okay? So here we go. <laughs> I'm already scared. okay. Can I pick up some blue? These are not gonna be perfect circles by any means and that's okay so i'm going to then use my size six brush to kind of draw out that color and i'm leaving some white spots too because i don't want it to be a blob and those white spots are gonna help you know, make it look like a highlight. So you wanna preserve those. Okay. You know what, I had a clip. Oh, here it is. Oops, I grabbed the color with the size six. That's okay. I think I chose bubbles for this first page because um, if you studied art history, you know that bubbles are a symbolism for, you know, the the briefness, the brevity of life, um, the fleetingness of it all. And so I think I wanted to do that because even though today is the first day of spring, um, you know, life as the spring kind of represents like the start of life again, it's not always guaranteed. It's not always um, 
yeah, I don't know what to call it. But, and so because of that, and like I said, I visited my, oh, shouldn't have done blue and orange together. That's okay. Um, and because I visited that friend who just had surgery, I'm kind of in this reflective mood of like, I want to, you know, really treasure each moment too. And so, yeah. So even as you're painting, kind of pause and like look at what's happening on the paper. Cause I love that as watercolors dry, um, it, changes a little bit it may dry lighter um, some colors may you know I don't think they actually dry darker correct me if I'm wrong but they usually dry lighter and yeah and then if you kind of step away for a moment you might notice that some of the paint has you know bled it's uh, it's mixing with the other colors and it's creating a new color so every once in a while just kind of pause and look at what's happening on the paper okay I'm making sure to kind of use different size circles and I think after I do a couple I might try to layer them too we'll see what happens <laughs> again really just going with the flow So my paint is very, very wet. It's very runny and watery. If you watched my video on the five consistencies of paint and water mixtures, um, yeah, you'll know what I'm talking about. But you want it to be really runny so that you can kind of get that, um, get the paint to kind of spread pretty quickly. Again, I'm kind of pausing and looking at what's happening. And as you're doing that, I think it's really hard not to compare. Um, so if I was working off of a reference photo, it's really easy to you know look at that reference photo and be like, oh, it doesn't look anything like that, or be discouraged that it's not, the paint isn't behaving the way that you want it to behave. So when you are reflecting and looking at your work, try not to think those thoughts, okay? Be especially during sessions like this. Like if you're actually painting for, you know, a competition or, you know, for a client, obviously you should paint it correctly. <laughs> but for a session like this where it's meant to be no pressure, no strings attached, just focusing on mindfulness, then you don't want to allow those kinds of critical thoughts to invade your mind, right? So as you're looking, instead try to turn it into positive phrases like, ooh, I really like how bright these areas are, or I didn't realize that you know mixing this light orange and this bright cyan color is going to create this weird earthy greenish color you know so i'm trying to think more positively about what's happening here so as you're painting right now um yeah try to try to reflect on your work but not in a critical way like oh i should have done this differently or you can think like that but then not in a way of like i'm going to throw this away at the end of the day So with my size six brush, it's just loaded with water and I'm just drawing out that color. I think I want some really, really tiny bubbles. And I'm gonna do that with just a size six brush or size three.
If you're just kind of tuning in, um, you know, feel free to ask, this is a live session, so feel free to ask questions here. And even if you're catching the recording later, you can um, still, oh, you know what? Um, you can still ask questions and then I'll try to reply to them in the comments. having a lot of fun just kind of focusing on these four colors and yeah I don't know <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this project because you know somewhere along the way I kind of lost touch of you know just why it's fun to create um, I'll be honest, when I first started my journey back in 2016, um, I did it almost out of necessity and uh, for survival. So I kind of stumbled upon watercolor because I started bullet journaling and then I picked up calligraphy and then I just sort of, like I said, stumbled into watercolor. And um, it was also during a really hard time in my life and I ended up using watercolor like um, almost like therapy, you know, just I needed something to help me escape my reality. I'm getting really real here. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I kind of used it as a way to escape reality and being able to paint something pretty made me feel like I had, you know, some like some control something that I could control in my life because everything else seemed to just go wrong or be wrong um, yeah and then I think as then as it turned into a business almost a year later um, it started to take on a different form where it became oh now I have to create for clients or now I have to create online classes when it actually started as a as a healing component for me you know and so during the pandemic I felt like I kind of had to return to that I sort of lost touch with why I started watercolor in the first place so I don't know if that you know is your story maybe you stumbled upon watercolor just because you saw a cool YouTube video one day um, and you just you know wanted to try it out um, or maybe maybe you were kind of like me where you found watercolor because you wanted to kind of express yourself and but now you're kind of losing um, the steam for it or maybe you've lost the passion or maybe you feel like your skills have kind of hit a wall um, yeah I don't know where you are in that journey but I just wanted to kind of tell that story so that you can understand that I probably have been where you are or have been as well and um, yeah it's not fun you know realizing that something that you really really enjoyed 
know, started to kind of suck the joy out of you. <laughs> so this is, that's why I'm doing this project. I want to kind of bring back that joy and yeah, remind myself that even if no one's watching, even if um, I don't, I don't create classes, um, even if no one will ever see this, you know, sketchbook, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and that it's first for me. So, yeah. I honestly didn't know if anyone would even show up tonight. So <laughs> just seeing, you know, you guys here and commenting, that's very encouraging to me. It's very motivating. So thank you for showing up. Thank you for commenting. Um, oh, hi, Rena. Yeah, I see your comments. Yeah, you, you can relate because you also see or you use watercolor as a way to release anxiety after work. Yeah, totally. Oh, in 2016 too, so kind of similar timeline. Yeah, watercolor is totally healing. Um, I'm so glad I've, I've, I've learned it. Yeah. And just to let you know, it's not like I'm never going to release classes again. Like, I still will um, because teaching is really my first love, I believe, and and then being able to teach watercolor just makes everything better. So yeah, don't worry. I will still come out with a class and I, I'm working on it right now if you're curious. Um, so first of all, I'm a Skillshare teacher. So Skillshare is a membership platform. Um, you can try Skillshare free for 30 days. I do have a link in the description if you want to try it out. Um, but yeah, so I have several, maybe almost two dozen classes now. Uh, most of them are watercolor. But the next one that I'm going to come out with is on how to mix greens. And if you were here at the very beginning, I said that, you know, the, some of these greens in my palette I hardly ever use because they're very unnatural colors. So um, a lot of watercolor artists recommend you just mixing your own greens and then using that in your painting. So I want to show you how to do that. And it's more than just mix yellow and blue to get green because that is true but which yellows which blues and then even if you have some kind of bright green here then how can you modify it to create other greens so yeah if you're interested in that you can sign up for skillshare or find me on skillshare okay i'm just gonna do a couple layering And I'm just about done with this page. I'm really happy with how it's turning out. I will be real. Um, you know, I am afraid that there are going to be days in this 100 day journey that I don't like what I've painted. And I know that's going to happen. So we'll see how. I handle that <laughs> when that happens. Okay. All right, so I'm just about nearing the end of my session and I may come back to it and add some more details. Who knows? We'll see. But um, the breathing exercise that we did at the beginning, I'm going to do it at the end to to finish my session. So as I'm washing out my brushes, I'm just going to inhale. And then exhale as I blot. And this breathing really helps me like literally slow down and I'm able to like prevent myself from like jumping to the next activity. I can just, again, just kind of stop here, pause and look at what's happening. So yeah, I'm just gonna take a moment, just admire what I've put on paper. And I want you to do the same if you painted along with me.
I think in the end, you should always feel proud of yourself for, you know, A, showing up, um, B, conquering the fear of the blank page and actually painting something, and then C, just completing it, you know? I know it's kind of cliche to say like, oh, everyone should get a prize just for participating, you know, that participation trophy kind of thing, but I think there is something to that, especially for creatives. And I think it's important to remind yourself that even just showing up like this and painting something as simple as bubbles is worth celebrating. So yeah, um, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you know what? Let me change my view here. <laughs> so again, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, whether you painted bubbles with me or, um, or you painted something on your own, Again, the whole goal of these sessions is to show up and be mindful as we're painting. So if you're coming in with a lot of, you know, just heavy burdens or emotions um, or just a really hard day, you know, painting it is going to be a really great way to kind of release that and process it as you're painting. Um, so yeah, so here is day one of watercolor mindfulness. Thank you again so much for joining. The next time I'll be live is Friday, March 24th, the same time, 8 p.m. Central, GMT minus five. And I hope to see you there. Thank you again so much.